Hello designers and welcome back to another Affinity Designer tutorial. Today I will be creating a design whilst using a stock photo as a reference image. If you want to design along with me I will be doing it step by step. I will show you how to use different effects to create a sense of realism, such as 3D, bevel and emboss, and Gaussian blur. I'll also be showing you tips and tricks along the way as usual. Without further ado, let's jump right in. Okay, if you are following along with me, I'll just show you my document setup. The dimensions are 1920 by 1080 pixels and 72 dpi color is RGB. Not that important, but it helps if you are following along. The first thing we're going to do is try and grab an image from a stock photography website and recreate it. So we're going to head to the stock tab on the right hand side. We're going to click on that. Make sure pixels is selected. And in the search bar, we're going to type in, or I'm going to paste, wooden plate with metal spoons. And I'm going to press return. And we're going to choose this first image here by Karolina Grabowska. Probably a terrible pronunciation, but I tried, and that's the main thing. So I'm going to click and drag that out onto my document. And that's a huge picture. So I'm just going to zoom out a little bit. I'm going to grab the corner here, just going to hover over it, press command and click and drag so it centers whilst scaling. Just zoom in a bit. It's wooden plate with two black metal spoons. I'm going to need a wooden texture for this bowl. The rest of it I'll recreate in Affinity. So we're going to go and get that texture now from the same place. So heading back to the stock tab, just click on the little X to get rid of whatever was typed in there before. And we're going to type in wood, press return. This third one in here, FW Studio, we're going to click and drag that out onto our document also. Zoom out and do the same thing again. Okay, let me organize this a little bit better. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is create a circle for our bowl. And just looking at the wood grain, it's going kind of in this direction here. So I'm just going to move this to kind of reflect that as well. Let's zoom in on the plate. Head on over to our ellipse tool on the left hand side. Click on that. And we're going to find somewhere in the center of the plate and click and drag outwards. I'm going to hold down command and shift. So it scales up in a perfect circle and I kind of want to see what's behind right now. So I'm just going to go on opacity top right hand corner there and just bring it down slightly. And I'm still in the ellipse tool because I've got these crosshairs and I want to move this circle around a little bit. So I'm going to press V, which is a shortcut for our move tool, which is on the top left hand corner there. So I'm just going to try and offer it up to the center a little bit and I'm going to scale it up a bit. So to scale this perfectly, command shift and drag up and out like that. So just play around until you get it right. So I'm just going to drag these out a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to drag the circle out to the right hand side there, maybe right next to it so that we can see the difference as we're making it. Right, head to the layers panel. And you can see we've got a few images here. This is the one we downloaded of the plate. And this is our wooden texture. I'm just going to rename it wood. And this is our plate, this black circle here. So I'm going to call that plate. OK, I'm going to bring the opacity of the plate back up again here. We're going to grab the texture and we're going to clip it inside of this shape here. In the layers panel, click on the wood, click and drag up and to the right hand side and you can see it's now clipped inside so I'll, I'll release and you can see it's in there now so I'll just scale this down a little bit so that we can get more grain in there so that's looking pretty good and I'll just rotate it around a little bit around here that's I'm happy with that now we have to think about how to make it a little bit more three-dimensional we're going to use the effects tab for this so head down to layer effects click on that and I'll just move that across a little bit and from this point, we are going to select 3D. So let's have a play around with this until we get our plate shape right. So I'm going to play around with the radius first. So I'm going to click and drag that up somewhere like, I don't know, 
here and you can see it's like it's kind of like an upside down bowl right now and we don't want that just yet so let's go ahead and click on profile and with this one you can see if you select all of the different profiles it kind of plays around with it they're kind of almost bowly aren't they but what we're going to do is we're just going to click on standard profile here and i'm going to click and drag up this corner and i'm going to click and drag down the right hand corner what i'm going to do now is click and drag the first one out to around about there kind of almost in the center and then i'm going to start adding a few more points so i'm going to click and drag to about here and i'm going to click and drag another point about there so it's looking very sharp right now and i don't necessarily want that so we're going to play around with the soften slider which i'm going to do now so let me just get that right a little bit more so up here where it says soften we're going to soften the edges a little bit so click and drag that up until we're kind of happy as you can see on the bowl here it's a little bit soft as it goes down and let's drag the radius back a bit because I think that's a little bit too thick. Um, what we're gonna do, it's a little bit too shiny uh, and our bowl isn't that shiny. So there is a thing called shininess. We're gonna click and drag that down a little bit more. And uh, the specular is for the actual harder shine, if that makes sense. So let's click and drag that down a little bit more. And it's just turned out that it is kind of in the right place. Uh, the light direction and we play around with our light direction down here so if I just click and drag this around you can see imagine if the light source was coming from down there but on our image it's coming from around about here so we'll probably kind of leave it like that it looks a little bit darker here so I'm just going to play around with ambient kind of our ambient light bring it up a bit and maybe bring the specular down a little bit more. Okay, let's zoom out and have a look. Okay, it's coming together pretty well. I think what I'm gonna do is bring down the opacity of this whole 3D thing, just because I can't see anything underneath here. Um, so I'm gonna bring that down slightly so we can see the grain still around about here. Oh, actually, before we close that, I was just thinking around the edges of the bowl, there is a little bit of shadow because obviously the light is kind of coming from this direction here and it's a little bit of light here. So I'm going to add something else to our one. Uh, so I'm going to go to bevel emboss. I'm going to click on that, select it. And that's not the right one that we need because you can see there's shadow on the outside. So I'm going to go ahead and click on type and inner. So that'll only affect inside of this shape here. And we're going to play around with the direction of the light so again the direction was kind of up here in this corner and you can see it's uh, down there it's a little bit too dark so that's our shadow is here and our highlights are here so we can kind of play around with that. the highlights I'm happy with shadow not so much so I'm just going to bring the opacity down of that I'll leave the color on black for now okay so I'm happy with that um, one more thing forgot to mention before um, if I do go ahead and scale this plate up and down we want to make sure all the effects are scaling with it so under bevel emboss I'm going to click on scale with object and I'm going to go back to 3d and that's already done okay so press close we've got a pretty cool plate here it's not exactly the same but it's pretty good okay let's have a look at these spoons so before we go any further, it's good to save your document occasionally, just in case the worst happens. So go ahead and save it. So in the layers panel, let's close up that plate thing. That's done. And let's have a look at our spoons. So what I'm going to do, I want to make these a little bit straight first because I'm going to trace around them with a pen tool. Just going to grab this handle up here and click and drag it around till it looks kind of straight. And I'm going to offer it up to the side kind of use that as a measuring tool uh, something like that okay I'll just drag it onto the middle again now we're actually going to use a guide uh, so I'm going to click on this side area here this kind of ruler I'm going to click and drag out and one will magically appear let's zoom in and see if I've got it straight enough almost almost 
Okay, I'll play around a little bit more. Okay, that looks centered to me. So now I'm gonna go ahead and create um, an outline of it. So I'm just gonna bring the opacity down of our image here. So I'm gonna click on opacity, see here, and gonna click and drag it down a little bit so it's a little bit washed out. Now we're gonna grab the pen tool. Shortcut is P. Click on that and zoom in. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make sure my snapping is on. If you wanna know what snapping guides I have on, there they are. Okay, let's start off. So you can see it's kind of snapping to this guide here. Just gonna click and drag out anywhere right now. Just to make it straight, I'll click on shift, which kind of automatically brings it level. Okay, so we have our first point there. I'll just drag somewhere, somewhere like that. And to see a little bit better of what we're doing, I'm just gonna give it a stroke. So up here on the stroke top left, I'm gonna make it completely black and I'm gonna make it a little bit thinner, like so. All right, back on the pen tool. Let's have a look what we're doing. It doesn't have to be perfect. So if you wanna know more about the pen tool and how I'm using it, because I won't go into everything right now, I'll add a link to the pen and no tool tutorial, uh, another video I made uh, previously. So I wanna play around with this first handle here. So I'm gonna click on command and just gonna grab this and shift to keep it straight. I have it about there. Now I'm gonna click on command. It's a shortcut to the node tool, click on that. So we can select this one uh, so we can start plotting out our next points. So the next one I'll put is about here, holding down shift to make sure it goes straight up. And I'll just go in. I'm constantly changing between the pen tool and the node tool via this command shortcut. So I just press command and it turns into that, but my finger is always on command. And that means I can play around with these handles. So somewhere like that, and again, click on this just to make sure that's selected and I'll go to about here drag it out a little bit see I haven't got that quite right so again command and shift bring that in a little bit okay I won't continue this is what I'll be doing as I go around and finish this off okay So I've just added the last point in there and I wanna get rid of this handle uh, so I can have a straight line going up. So I'm just gonna click on Alt and as I hover over it, I'll just click it once and that's brought this into a kind of sharp end here. So I'll just zoom out and I'll do the same with this one here. Click on Command, select the node, head on over to the handle, hold down Alt and click and now they're both sharp ends. So now I'll go from the top all the way to the bottom here and I'll just click on it. Okay, so we have one half of a spoon here. So I'll just go ahead and take off this stroke and I will go up to the fill and I'll just fill that with completely black. So you can see here we've got one half. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to copy this. So I'm gonna press Command J, which will duplicate it. You see down here in the layers panel, we have two halves now. I'm gonna make two halves a whole. I've got the other half here. I'm going to head on up to transform and I'm gonna click on flip horizontal. I'm gonna click on that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click and hold down shift and drag across till it snaps into place there. I'll just get rid of this guide now. Just drag it and chuck it off into the corner. And I'm gonna click both of these in the layers panel. So both of them are selected and I'm gonna go up to the geometry tools and gonna add them as their one piece. There we go, that's done. So now if I click and drag it around, this is one spoon. Okay, so I'll just go back to our image here and bring up the opacity again. And I'll just strain it out so that we can try and recreate that look. Bring it a little bit closer. And I'm gonna grab my spoon. I'm gonna place it, oops, it's underneath here. So in the layers panel, I better just call it spoon, spoon one. And I'm gonna drag that onto the top layer here. And I'll just move it across so it's kind of similar. Chuck it onto our plate. Let's look at the photo of the spoon so that we can figure out kind of what we're going to do with our spoon. So you can see it's a little bit lighter here 
and it's a lot lighter in this kind of area here. So let's try and recreate that with our spoon. So I'll just start with this uh, top section here. So for this, I'm just gonna use a circle. So we're gonna go ahead and grab our ellipse tool again. And I'm gonna click and drag out some kind of circle like that. I'm gonna go up to the colors tab and I'm gonna make it white. I'm just gonna drag it across like that. I'm gonna click on the move tool, which is V and just drag it kind of into place. Uh, now I'm going to clip this inside of the spoon shape. So in the layers panel, I'm going to click down and to the right, and that will clip it inside like that. And with this, I'm going to add a Gaussian blur. So I'm going to click on effects, and I'm going to click on Gaussian blur, and I'm going to drag it up so that we can see kind of how much we need. So that kind of, that's kind of looking good there. And I'll just click on scale with object in case we have to scale up and down later on. Press close. And with the highlight here selected, I'm just going to bring down the opacity slightly. Well, a lot actually. So we can kind of see if it looks similar to that one over there. Maybe bring it up a little bit more. Yeah, somewhere like that. Okay, so that's our first one. I'll just name this uh, one. And next one is this area here. So I'm just going to test out drawing something. I'll grab the pencil tool this time. So on my pencil tool, I have stabilizer turned on here. This kind of allows you to have this line that you can kind of drag around. Um, I'll just go off of that for a sec. And I'll make that a little bit less. The window that creates a slightly shorter rope. So I'll go ahead and draw that out, something like that. Round and kind of goes down like that. Something like that. And to close that up, I'm going to click on A, which is our node tool. I'm going to click and drag over the last two points. That's the first one. That's the second one. I'm going to go up here to action. I'm going to click on close curve and that will just close the curve off for us. Okay, and we're going to add another Gaussian blur here. So over to the effects tab, drag Gaussian blur up a little bit like that. And we can play around with it more a bit later on. So scale with objects like that. And let's have a look at this. It's looking a bit too much now. So I'm going to go ahead and bring down the opacity again. And I'm going to start playing around with some of these nodes. Okay, so that's kind of our base lighting. And I think I'll add another one on top that's kind of got this shape here. Let's see how it turns out. So for this one, I'll use the pen tool this time. And I'll go in and I'll probably click somewhere like that. Okay, drag it out, something like this. And it's kind of got this circle here, so I'm going to try and integrate the circle in there a little bit. I'll just grab a little circle here. Okay, now I'm going to make this white. Just going to play around with that a little bit more actually. So I'm going to go to my node tool. I'm going to click on that. I'll just drag out this line. And now I'm going to give it a Gaussian blur again. So over to the effects tab again. Drag that up. Yeah, that's kind of looking cool. It's not going to be that white there. So what I'm thinking about doing is instead of that just being completely white like that, I'm going to change it slightly. So just going to click off of layer effects and I'm going to go up to the transparency tool. I'm going to click on that and I'll just click and drag out. So it kind of the most of the white is over here and then it will gradually fade out into kind of nothingness. Maybe we can stick a little bit less Gaussian blur so it's a little bit sharper. So over to Gaussian blur again and just drag that down a little bit more. 
So it's a little bit sharper there. Hit the move tool. Let's have a look up here. It gets a little bit darker around here and it's gone a little bit darker there. And so we're going to add another effect onto this, something we've used before. So I'm going to click on the spoon in the layers panel and I'm going to click on effects again. We'll go to uh, bevel emboss again and we're going to click on inner and we're going to bring down the radius a lot here. If I zoom in here, it's dark here. It's dark on this side as well. So what I'm going to do is instead of having light and dark here, which is highlight and shadow, I'll just change the uh, highlight to actually black as well. Bring it up a little bit more and we'll head down here under highlight. It says screen and multiply. So we're just going to change the blend mode to multiply as well. So that, that way we get to see that color on the top as well as the bottom. Uh, regardless of where the uh, kind of direction of light is coming from, if that makes sense. So let's have a little look at our photo. So it's about that thick there. Just scoot across to ours. It's kind of almost the same. I think we'll bring the radius down a little bit more. And let's press close on that and just zoom out, see what it looks like. That's looking pretty good to me. I'll just have a quick look around. Uh, all of it's completely black down there. I'm going to call that done on the spoon. So I'll just press save here. My computer is freaking out a little bit. Okay, so the next thing we're going to want to do is add some shadows because obviously this spoon is on a plate and there's some light going on here. So it's going to cast some shadows. What I'm going to do, I mean, I'm not going to add a shadow like go to effects and then outer shadow. I could bring that up and then offset it. It's going to look weird because the shadow is going to go over the plate and I don't want that. So instead we're going to copy the spoon. So we're going to press command J to duplicate it. And it's created one. We'll just change this now and call this spoon one shadow. And I'm just going to open it up and get rid of all those things that we've got inside of there. And I'm just going to drag it out a little bit here. Add a Gaussian blur onto that. So heading on up to Gaussian blur, which uncheck bevel. Gaussian blur, bring up the radius a bit or a lot. And press close there. From this point, I want to get rid of all of this stuff here. So I'm going to clip this shadow here inside of the plate. So I'm going to go ahead and do it like I did with the texture. So I'm going to grab the spoon, drag down and to the right. And now that's clipped inside. You see it's not going over the edge. Let's have a look at the spoon. So most of the shadow is around here and you get a little bit around here and there isn't really much to speak of in the center there. So we're going to play around with the node tool. I'm going to bring that in slightly. We bring that out. A little bit more there and we'll kind of do it side by side so i'm going to bring this in in fact i'll probably delete those points completely i'm just going to have a play until it kind of looks good to me Okay, I think that spoon is finished. So I'm going to press V, the move tool, and I'm just going to select the spoon and top layer there. And we're just going to copy and paste this spoon because uh, they look almost exactly the same. So I'm going to, instead of pressing Command C, Command V to copy and paste or Command J to duplicate, this time I'm just going to press Command, keep my finger on Command. I'm going to click the spoon and just going to drag it down to somewhere where I think is kind of similar. And you can see that's uh, my initial placement is way off of the first one. So just gonna grab that spoon and grab the shadow. So I've selected spoon one and I've pressed command and selected spoon one shadow. It's gonna drag that up to, where is it, about here. And now I'm gonna drag spoon two which we're going to call it spoon two 
and I'll drag that underneath just because I like it that way. It's going to drag it up so it's kind of similar to that one. I can see the shadow isn't in the correct space now, so I'll just quickly play around with that. Press on the node tool, get more shadow here. Okay, that's that's fine. Okay, let's go back to spoon two and I've got the placement pretty much all right there. And we're going to copy the shadow of spoon one, command J. And I'm gonna call it spoon two shadow. Press return, just gonna have it underneath. Just keep it all organized. And I'm just gonna drag that down. And I'll play with the nodes until I think it's in the right spot because it isn't there. So just drag the, these ones out a little bit. And that is it. We have finished the spoons. Um, so let's make the background now and create this shadow that's coming off of both of them. I'm going to grab a rectangle from the rectangle tool and I'm just going to click on this bottom bit here and I'm just going to click out and I'll choose the color. So I'll grab the uh, eyedropper tool on the top right hand side there. It's going to click and drag that and choose this color here. And when I click that little circle there, it changes it to this. So you can see it kind of matches up nicely. So I'm going to hide that plate. And I'm going to press the move tool and I'm just going to drag it out till it snaps to each of these corners here. And I'll grab our plate and spoons. I'll drag it off into the middle here. And I'll grab our photo, and just drag it on the top there. And just so I can get a little bit of a better look to it, I'm going to go over to grab the vector crop tool. I'm just going to crop it. So before we go any further, I haven't scaled up my one yet, but I've just remembered that on each of these, I didn't uh, press on scale with object on each of my Gaussian blur layers. So I'm just going to go ahead and select all of them here and I'm going to click scale with object just in case I need to scale up later. Always good to do that. And I'll do the same with uh, spoon two as well. So select select the FX there and then press shift and select the last one. And then you can go ahead and press scale with object. Just making sure everything's nice and uh, tidy. And I'll also do the same for the shadows. So select both of those, scale with object, close, there we go. And then I can press command S, save the document just in case. Okay, time for the final part. We're going to add the shadow of the bowl and the spoons. So you can see it coming around here and then the spoons casting off a very light shadow. We're going to recreate that. So head on over to your plate uh, there in the layers panel and we're just going to press command J and that's going to duplicate it. Underneath, we're going to click on that and I'm going to say shadow and open it up and delete everything inside and go on the effects and just click off of both of those. And you're just going to want to drag it out a little bit. Okay, so basically it's our plate with nothing in it. And we're going to add an effect on there. So down to effects, Gaussian blur, drag it out a little bit. Maybe somewhere like that for now. And Scale with object is on, that's good. Okay, let's change the color slightly. I want this shadow to be the same as that shadow. So as it's selected, I'm gonna grab the eyedropper tool and select a color from the dark shadow kind of area here. And I'm just gonna drag it out slightly more. And it looks like it's not completely round here. So I'm gonna play around with the shape until I get something that's kind of similar. I'll just click off of snapping because that's turned on. It's slowing things down for me over here. And I'm going to twist it around. I'll play with it until I get the desired result. 
Okay, now I want to add the spoon shadow. So I'm just going to go ahead and convert this to curves because it was just a circle. And if we press on the node tool, you see we, we can't play around with any of the nodes. So we have to click convert to curves, which is up here. Click on that and now you can see there's nodes we can play around with. Um, okay, I could bring that in a little bit like that. And so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna create a few nodes. So it looks like it comes out from around about here. Not sure if you can tell in your computer screen. So I'm just gonna make a few nodes around here. And I'm gonna click the middle node and just drag it out. Yeah, something like that. Maybe I could bring it a bit further over here. So if you're ever in this position where you need to bring all of these nodes across at the same time, uh, you can go ahead and click on Alt and click and drag and you can draw around any node you want. So they're all selected now. Now I just move it across like that. And we'll do the same again over here. One, two, three, drag the middle node out. It's kind of similar. Maybe I have to drag it out slightly further again. So I'll do the same thing I did before. Drag all of those out slightly. I'll just drag this out. I know I think that's I think that's fine. We could probably make the shadow slightly darker. We can try that out. Okay, that's uh, that looks great. Press V, the move tool. I'll just package all of this up into one. So we have our spoon, spoon one, spoon two, our plate and our shadow underneath. So I'm just going to select spoon one, hold down shift, click on shadow and I'll press Command G, which is group. So now they're all in a group, and you can see if I click on the little arrow, they're all in there. Now I can move it around wherever I wish. And it is complete hour one on the left-hand side, all made in Affinity Designer. We didn't even leave the program, and we managed to get the stock photograph that we needed to create it, and the wood texture. Fantastic. I hope you've all found some value in the video I've created today. If you have, let me know in the comments section, and subscribe if you like my videos. Go check out my other ones. Yeah, leave me questions as well. I'm always answering questions in the comments section. Also, I'm learning from all of the design community as well, so thank you for all your comments. Follow me on Twitter as well. All the links will be left below. Not always about design, sometimes about other things, NFTs. Have you heard of those? All right, I'll see you on the next one. Until then, happy designing. Cheers.